This is BBC World News, our top story. Remarkable scenes outside the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center as President Trump takes a short ride to greet his supporters. And the convoy comes back in this direction and about six feet away from me, the president is waving. Mr. Trump is being treated for coronavirus. Earlier, doctors said they were pleased with his progress. If he continues to look and, and feel as well as he does today, our hope is that we can plan for a discharge as early as tomorrow to the White House where he can continue his treatment course. I'm Martine Croxall in London, also in the headlines. Nearly 16,000 cases of coronavirus have not been added to the UK daily total over the last week, according to Public Health England. Armenian and Azerbaijani forces exchange heavy rocket and artillery fire as fighting intensifies over Nagorno-Karabakh. Russia calls for an immediate ceasefire. Hello and welcome to BBC World News. I'm Larry Mido. In the past 30 minutes, we've seen extraordinary scenes outside the military hospital in Maryland where President Trump is being treated for coronavirus. Mr. Trump temporarily left the hospital in a presidential convoy and waved at supporters who had gathered outside. The BBC's North America editor, John Sopel, was right there and witnessed that moment. He was leaving hospital, but I don't think he's going back to the White House. It was the most extraordinary scene. And you can hear the noise now. They have closed the road. Police suddenly fanned out and cleared this huge highway behind us. And I'm thinking, well, who would you clear the highway for? The First Lady? And then we see the convoy that is familiar if you live in Washington. That is the President's convoy, driving incredibly slowly, first down the other side of the road. And then you can suddenly see all these people going mad. It's obvious that it's the President. And then he goes down about half a mile, does a U-turn, and the convoy comes back in this direction, and about six feet away from me, the president is waving, and waving again. Throughout this weekend, there's been a lot of contradictory information from the White House and doctors about how the president is doing. Today, the doctors confirmed that his oxygen levels twice dipped to levels that caused additional oxygen to be given. Dr. Jeremy Faust is an emergency medicine physician from Cambridge, Massachusetts, and he joins me now. Let's start with what just happened. President Trump in a car with the Secret Service, at least two people in the same car, driving to greet his supporters. As a medical professional, what did you make of that? What's the risk here? Well, the Secret Service uh, has signed up for this, and they take a huge risk there. Masks are really important, but they are not perfect. So we can only hope that there's a, a test to show that he's not contagious, an antigen test. We're not told that. We, we know nothing. I'm glad that he didn't get close to his supporters and out, outside. That would have been extremely un, unwise. But I think, as you say, the, the president is very wrapped up in appearances and he wants to project that he's doing well. I think it's a good sign that he can go out and do this uh, for the moment, but it doesn't have any prognostic uh, value. So he can do this today and, and tomorrow he could be better or he could be worse. It just means that he was well enough for this period of time to go and do this uh, PR stunt. What about the risk to the other people in the car with him? I went to a COVID unit a few months ago and I had to wear three layers of PPE and two masks and a face shield and all that because I was coming into contact with people who are infected. Shouldn't that be the same for them? Yes, I would be very worried. I don't think that it's wise for the president to be in a enclosed space with anyone unless it's absolutely necessary. So the president feels that it's necessary to make such an appearance, but obviously there, it's not truly necessary. The people know if we see the videos, we hear the reports, the, the reports from medical staff at Walter Reed and his, and his physician have been extremely difficult to parse, but at least we have enough information to know that the president is awake and he's talking and he's communicating with us. So there was no need for this and it just, places people at unnecessary risk, and it can put this message out that um, the risk isn't so bad, so that the average person doesn't think that they ought to be concerned about their own risks in a similar situation. 
And the risk is not too bad because that's exactly what he wants to convey. We heard another press conference today from his medical team, which raised more questions than answered some people's concerns. We spoke yesterday with you, so it's been 24 hours. What did we learn today or what are your new thoughts? Well, the first thing I thought was extremely striking was that there's actually contradictory information seemingly one day to the next. And one could cite, his physician could say, I cannot tell you this detail or answer that question out of respect for privacy. That is a perfectly ethical, moral, and correct answer. What I do not think is correct is to do what essentially was implied here, which was to mislead the, the press and the, the public about his condition in order to be upbeat. That is highly inappropriate. That is misleading. The people deserve to know the truth. If the president has a rough course and recovers, wonderful. But if he doesn't, what are we going to say? I don't see the upside here that talking nice about things will not make things nice. It just misleads. So it, it's very confusing. We learned that his oxygen saturation dropped in such a way that he could be in a risk category that could be far more severe than we were initially told. We hear that he had a high fever, not a mild fever. We hear that his x-rays or CAT scans, depending on what they did, were expected, which is not normal, expected for COVID-19, I have seen expected, and they're not pleasant. So we're learning that things are not as rosy as we're, we're told a day ago, and I don't see the upside of that. Why not just say the truth, or I can't tell you. Those are perfectly good options. Dr. Jeremy Faust, thank you so much for helping us understand this. It's really puzzling to a lot of people. And also consider this. Three Republican senators have recently tested positive for COVID-19. That means the confirmation of Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court might not be easy, at least before the presidential election. Jonathan Turley is a law specialist at George Washington University here. The key to remember is that the majority leader has zero margin for error. He cannot lose a senator to a convalescent period. So we don't know how serious the illness is for these senators. Uh, what is clear is that the Republicans are going to go forward and if they have to take these senators into the floor on a gurney, uh, my expectation they would do it if they consented. And the Democrats will do everything within their power to try and stall and delay and block this. The coronavirus seems like a good excuse for them to try and bring that into play. It's not going to be successful. This falls in the category of holding my breath until you give in. Uh, McConnell will just let them hold their breath. Uh, it, it, he has the votes necessary. He can change the rules and allow for a virtual hearing. He can even allow for virtual voting uh, if they push through those changes. And the thing is, even though time is short before the election, it's not that short. Uh, he can actually get this confirmation through uh, in this period. Uh, and he can also make changes if he has to. So he has a little time to play with, assuming these two senators uh, are on demand. Uh, they did apparently get it early, which is always a good sign. So you think there is still time, one, to change the vote to a virtual one if necessary, and two, to stick to this timeline that makes sure that this confirmation happens before November 3rd, which is election day? Yes. I mean, there is a possibility that they could push through this nomination during the lame duck period. But what is clear is that the Senate is all hands on deck. They are moving heaven and earth to get this confirmation across the finish line. Uh, they have a number of weeks, and I think they're hoping that that's enough for these senators to recover. Uh, so I think that on Capitol Hill, they're still pretty bullish about getting this through. The most the Democrats can do is really attack along the edges, making small delays an hour, maybe even a day, but it'll take something really horrific, like a serious illness of one of their two of these senators uh, to derail the strategy. And Joe Biden at the debate dodged the question of whether or not he's open to expanding the number of people in the court. So if this does go ahead and Judge Barrett is confirmed, does that give more fuel to this growing school of thought that the Democrats just need to expand it to make sure it remains ideologically in their, in their corner. He did. I mean, it was sort of lost because the president's performance at, at points was truly appalling. Uh, but it was equally shocking to see Joe Biden again refuse to answer this question of whether he will pack the court. Many people in the United States will not vote for a candidate 
who is open to packing the Supreme Court. And he continues to refuse to answer that, even though his running mate, Kamala Harris, is one of the Democrats that raised this issue. So this isn't coming from the Republican side. So it, I don't know how long he'll be able to continue this, because this is a major issue. For, in the view of some of us, packing the Supreme Court with six new members just to get a majority would destroy that institution. And it's an odd way to honor Ruth Bader Ginsburg to destroy the court she loved so much. A bizarre day in Washington made even more bizarre by the president's photo op to wave at his supporters. Uh, back to Martin now in our London studio. It's hard to wrap your head around why this was necessary. Like I was saying before, I went to a COVID unit and I had to wear three layers of PPE and a face shield and two masks yeah. just to get be anywhere close to anybody who's infected. One of my producers said, uh, we've got some pictures of the president in his SUV greeting his supporters. And I just went, wait, what? He's doing what? He's in hospital. And I mean, we should be used to, you know, unusual choreography. But I suppose this really does show, Larry, that the president knows his audience and what they'll respond to. That's exactly the word, choreography. He's from reality television. Remember that he likes a good stunt and his supporters appreciate it. And this it was for maximum effect. They have been out there and they finally feel seen. So despite what everybody else is complaining about, the risk to the Secret Service, they've had a good day. Yeah. And how many people have to quarantine after that? We don't know. Larry, good to see you. Thank you very much.